want to thank everybody for coming to our, our first wellness seminar. I'm glad so many people could make it. Um, and this is Kelly Quinn from um, the Elmhurst Memorial Hospital. And she's going to give us a, a nice uh, talk about nutrition. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for having me here. So I'm a registered dietitian. I'm actually an exercise and personal trainer for Elmhurst Memorial Healthcare. So you've seen our new facility. Were you guys at all involved with the building then at all? Did you get any? any? Oh, sorry. No, we just drove by it. We just drove by it every day. Yeah, it's big, right? Yeah. <laughs> so well, thanks for having me here today. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the fun things we have going on over at the hospital too, and out in the facility. If anybody's looking, this was, slide was on there, and I was going to take it out. I'm like, well, if you're looking for any of our, we have a lot of classes going on for the community, um, not just in Elmhurst, but Lombard, um, Villa Park, we have a lot of things going on around the area. So you can check it out on our website, emhc.org. Um, and actually, I'll just last night, we actually had the first of our Heart Month dinners, which were really nice. We won at Cafe Amano in downtown Elmhurst. We're going to have a couple more. One at the Newbies, another one not far from here at Seasons 52, and they're going to be the first Wednesday, uh, or, I'm sorry, each Wednesday of the month. Um, I'd like it to go 6.30 to 8.30. So if you're interested, we still have lots of seating. It's like $20 for a three-course meal. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, it doesn't include alcohol. But, <laughs> but that's not bad for a three-course meal out, you know, including your beverages, your physician, your speaker, and I, and I get up and talk about what the food we're eating and so forth. So I just I mentioned that. So that's a little blurb about care, and Care Match can help you get set up with that. So without further ado, we'll talk about the new American Plate. So this is a, a presentation that we've adapted from the American Institute for Cancer Research. So we're going to talk about this. It, it really, it, it all fits together. Healthy eating, I know I, um, Nancy shared with me, I hope it was okay, that we had a few people that had some some major health uh, challenges this year. Um, so, but this eating healthy to prevent cancer, heart disease, diabetes, etc. it all kind of goes together. So I'm going to talk, it talks a little bit about everything here. So, um, and you know, if you look at cancer treatment and prevention, there's a lot of, um, just a lot of information out there like, oh, could this supplement help? If I do this, if I do that. And a lot of us have genetic factors too that can cause us to be more likely to develop cancer. But a lot of people don't realize that there's a dietary connection with it too. It, like what we're doing with our diet and our lifestyle can affect our risk of getting cancer. Um, and there's a big link between um, nutrition and that. So it's not just what we eat, but it's also our weight. So if you're losing weight for other reasons, is to look better or to help with, um, you know, with heart preventing heart disease, et cetera. That's also going to lower your cancer risk. How much we move, how much we exercise is really is another really important part of it too. And then how we manage our weight, um, like I mentioned. So it doesn't mean that you have to be like a stick figure, but just having a help, what we call like a healthy weight for your height. And then that we found that like when people are able to work on all these things, that it really helps us reduce our risk of developing cancer, as well as diabetes, heart disease, um, uh, high blood pressure. I can like there's a whole bunch of things. So American Institute for Cancer Research, or AICR, um, they looked at all these things, and I, it's kind of exciting. They found that if people ate healthy, a healthy diet, we maintained, had a, a fairly healthy weight, and we were able to exercise and cut out tobacco, we'd be able to wipe out two-thirds of the cancer from the entire world's population. That's kind of, I think that's kind of an impressive statistic. So um, they did, so based on all that, I'll just kind of back up, they have some guidelines for cancer prevention. So they um, th they tell us from what they're, they've looked at research for years and years on people, healthy lifestyles and preventing cancer, that if we try to eliminate some of our um, processed foods and go more for plant-based foods, and Nancy did a great job today with, yay, with it. I see uh, the nice spread there with lots of fruits and vegetables. So plant-based foods, less red meat, which I know is hard. I, I just heard somebody was ordering, I had to stop to get a hamburger on the way back, right? From there. <laughs> oh, no, it was, it was a Whopper. Because oh. a hamburger kids a third of the fat of the Whopper. <laughs> okay. So we had to make sure we got the extra stuff. Terry folded. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so limiting red meat, and I know it's hard. But some red meat is important. We do need it for iron. We do need it for zinc. Actually, I just found out last week my iron levels are low, so I'm now on a red meat kick for a change instead of more plant-based food. We do need some of it, but just limiting it. And processed um, processed meats. Do you guys know what would uh, what would you categorize as a processed meat? Yeah. 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 Y
Yeah. Lunch meat? Unfortunately, I come from a whole family. Lunch meat? Everybody in my family would eat pasta. They would eat that for breakfast, lunch. My son said, I want a salami sandwich for breakfast. I'm like, oh, no. So, I mean, there, yeah, there you go. That's There's some more processed meat, too. So being physically active every day in any way for 30 minutes or more. So, and I understand from Nancy, you guys are going to maybe have like a walking challenge or something going on here. You're considering that. So it doesn't have to be, you know, going up to Quartz Plus, which is another place I work at here in Elmhurst, so, or, you know, going to a health club. It could be walk, just getting out for a walk. It could be chasing your kids around at the playground or going swimming with them or, or going sleigh riding, you know, maybe get some snow that sticks. Um, and aiming to be at a healthy weight throughout your life. And the, chew, the smoking and uh, tobacco really helps. Uh, cutting that out really makes a big difference, too. So we know, I, I'm not telling you guys anything you don't know, but there is, you know, our country is having a hard time managing our weight. So about a third of all adults are, over, are obese. So that means that they're, weight, they're ab above overweight. Then about a third of kids and adolescents are overweight or obese. So it's like it's two-thirds of all Americans are overweight <coughs> and obese. So it's kind of... And I have to say, sadly say, Elmer's Hospital employees were probably as bad or worse than the average statistics, because I do work for our, health, our wellness department. So we're really trying to get the employees, we're doing some uh, challenges with them to get walking and so forth. So we're all struggling with it, not just, you know, even people in healthcare are really struggling with it. So, and there's so many quick fix diets, right? I mean, it was like, I can remember when I first got out of school, it was like, everything was low fat. And then we went to low carb. And now, you know, there's a, in the, I just had somebody ask me last night about the paleo diet. Should I go in it or not? You know, so there's, there's so many. And a lot of these plans, unfortunately, they have, they cut out entire food groups, like the paleo diet or the caveman diet. You can't have bread, you can't have dairy and stuff. So, and they do, some of these do have complicated rules. And I think sometimes the extreme diets do work well in the short term because Anytime you increase your awareness, you start thinking about what you're putting in your mouth and eating with the mindful presence, you tend to be a little bit more careful about what you eat, you need less calories. Um, but most of the time, people can't stick with a lot of these um, really regimented rules for diet. So it, may, you know, it might make people believe that um, they can never achieve a healthy weight if they're trying to follow some of these plans. So all three of these steps, as I mentioned earlier, are really important for optimal health, not just cancer, but reducing heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes. Um, so things that are trying to follow plant-based diets, so I'm not saying that you should become vegetarian. I don't want to use that word because people get scared about that. Just trying to eat most of your foods being plant-based, um, whole grains, fruits and vegetables, those type of things. And 30 to 90 minutes of moderate, moderate activity daily really can help with people losing weight. Okay. So if you haven't been doing anything, just 30 minutes. Um, going up to 60 or 90 minutes can really, you know, bump things up a little bit. And just sometimes it's finding the thing that people really enjoy doing. Um, so the other thing that they, um, that we talk about a lot in here is about portion size and proportion. So I think we all have something called portion distortion. <laughs> so I, we, we were at the um, Cafe Mana last night where we had our talk. We, we partnered with them because they, I don't know if anybody's been to eat at that restaurant, they have a lot of small plates on their menu. But actually most restaurants, if you looked at the size of their plate, it's about the size of their plates, it's about the size of a manhole cover. And that's kind of a scary statistic there too. And even if you go out to buy new plates, you know, say, oh, you know, you brought in, like, I'm going to get a new set, and my sister and I get a new set. They're huge. You can't find small. So everything is gearing us towards bigger portions. Even the fruits and vegetables, it's hard to find a small banana. They're all very large compared to what they were, you know, 30 or 40 years ago. Um, so plant-based diets are they're definitely a greener way to eat, um, you know, better for the environment, better for us, too. They tend to be higher in vitamins and minerals and fiber. And I know, um, we said we had somebody asked about, like, what are some things I can eat to keep me filled up, you know? and you know, really munching on some vegetables throughout the day is good, but maybe having something with protein along with it that has a little bit of protein in it, like a hummus dip or um, nuts, for instance, which are plant-based, are good for helping fill up as long as it's a small portion. Um, the thing that I get excited about as a dietitian when I talk to groups about are the phytochemicals in plants. And so I get, I get this a lot of like, what are phytochemicals? Well, they are what gives the food its beautiful colors. I, for instance, I have a cup of tea here, and we hear lots about 
tea is good, coffee is good, red wine is good, right? <laughs> um, and those are because they have the colors in them, the, or the phytochemicals have health benefits. So they're not vitamins, they're not minerals, but they are other substances in the food, that natural plant substances. They help fight cancer, but they also help fight against heart disease, high blood pressure. We think they may have some correlation with diabetes too. So there's a lot of good health benefits. So it's the reason why you're hearing dark chocolate is good and wine is good and tea and coffee are good. So red Actually, wine is okay is what you're saying? Yes, let's have some now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in moderation, Keep of course, yes. I don't know what moderation red means. Good. Red wine is, yeah, because it's got more phytochemicals. And if you don't like red wine, or it, you know, grape, grape juice, or grapes are good too. Um, but I eat, and the way I always think about it, like I explain it when I talk to kids, is fight. They're fighting against disease. So they have antioxidant properties, and they're fighting to keep our bodies healthy. So all of the bad things that come in from the environment, cigarette smoke, you know, always, you know, stuff from car emissions. Uh, you know, the fats we take into our body, et cetera, it helps detoxify the body in these groups the, because they are good at scavenging up the bad things that we take into our So they each have different um, protective roles. So there's a lot, and you probably have heard of some of them, like lycopenes, the guys. What is that good for? Oh. You wake, four o'clock, Monday, four o'clock, sleep. Lycopenes? Lycopenes? Prostate, Prostate health. Very good. Yes. So we hear a lot about that. That's why on ketchup bottles now it says it could possibly prevent <laughs> prostate cancer. I'm thinking, really? That's kind of a hard <laughs> surprise. <laughs> that ketchup could do that, right? Flavonoids, there's our wine there. The uh, sulfo, I, mean, I can hardly say that one. I, somebody wasn't talking about broccoli earlier, right? Didn't they hear something about broccoli? There you go, that's a good source of that. Very powerful for helping prevent cancer, those um, cruci cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts too. Um, so plant foods, they have fiber as well as phytochemicals. So we think fiber is super important for helping us feel full. So you'll feel more full, obviously, if you have a piece of whole wheat bread versus a piece of white bread or whole grain rice versus white rice. Um, beans too are a great source of fiber and also of proteins. And they're also inexpensive too. Um, and yeah, whole grain, you just can't beat it. So, and we're seeing more and more whole grain products. Like there's whole wheat pasta. There's lots of different rice, not just. I actually, the chef last night made a soup with black rice in it. Never had it before. It was really cool. It actually, had so much phytochemicals in it that it turned the soup like a darker color. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, but it's like it's like loaded with phytochemicals. Um, so lots of there's lots of different options there, and sometimes it's fun to experiment. Some people are like we do a lot of the whole grain pasta. I've heard some people say they don't like it as much, but I think if you get it's fun to try different things out and check them out. Um, so uh, now talk a little bit about the meat intake in colon cancer. That so we've had you know actually no I have a, a student that's come to a lot of my I teach Pilates and um, very healthy woman. She was following a vegan diet, so no vegetable products of any kind and develop colon cancer. And so it's, it's a very bit much of an anomaly because we do see that more in people that you have a higher intake of red meat in their, their diet. So, but the woman who grew up in Germany where they were giving right after World War II and they were giving lots of vaccinations to the school children. So probably we're thinking that might be her thing. It's like a whole other story there. But red meat and processed foods, I think, are a big link for colon cancer. So that's like in your family, it might be a good idea to take a look at your intake of that. So we like to see it to about 18 ounces a week. So that's about six, three ounces servings uh, throughout the week or, you know, whatever. And it's gonna, I tell you guys, it's going to be very hard, and ladies, it's going to be very hard to go out to a restaurant to find a portion that's six ounces. <laughs> Am I right? Especially if you go just a little further south down 83 and go to Dicka's. <laughs> Has anybody been there to eat lately? Their steaks are huge. We did a program with them about three years ago. We were at, at, on, a, on a Tuesday night, and it was in a blizzard. <laughs> they had a special order, and they did not they didn't know how they were going to find a six-ounce steak. Everything is like 12, 16, 18 ounces. So um, red meat, if we go out when it's kind of fun to order, it, it tends to be a bigger portion. So you want to get the petite filet or something along those lines, or take some of it to take home. Yes? What, what, what's, what, what, what falls under red meat? Red meat, beef, steak. Um, you could kind of, I would not call pork that. Okay. Pork is the other so way meat, right? Primarily beef yeah, products, I'm talking beef right, products. Right. Yeah, ground beef, hamburgers. Yeah, beef products is what I'm talking about. So, good question. Stew meat, 
you know, you see that sometimes in the stores. So saying no to processed meats. Obviously, my family is struggling with this. They would eat it, like I said, I want a salami sandwich for breakfast. So, and there is a higher um, risk of it. And we think it's due to um, some of the uh, preservatives they put in the processed meats. So the nitrates. So if you are like a big fan of those, look for the ones that are nitrate free. Um, the Hormel brand, for instance, and Applebee brand that you can get at Jewel or Dominic's. They do a little better with keeping the, those nitrates out. We think those are some of those um, preservatives that could potentially become carcinogenic. Yeah, so look for the, I, I, that's what we typically will buy if we're getting them. Hot dogs is a little hard. I mean, that's all they have. It's usually you can find hot dogs at like Trader Joe's and those places that do, um, that don't use it, but the, that's, the hot dogs do have quite a bit of processed stuff in there. Sausage, pepperoni. So it's okay to have them look, look for the ones that have less preservatives in them. They're going to cost a little bit more, but it's rather better, or just try to save it as a special treat. I think is meat as a side dish or a condiment. I know that's kind of hard, because when you think of meat in the United States, is that's that's your, your steak and potatoes, and we always put the steak first. That's like the bigger portion of our plate. So we want our plates to be more like... Um, Really, uh, uh, the two-thirds or 66% of it should be fruits and vegetables or in the whole grains, and the last third of it being the meat, chicken, or fish. So if you go out to eat, it's exactly the opposite. They're going to give you a huge portion and maybe just a few little vegetables on the side. So we all like to go out to eat, myself included. So bring half of it home for another time, okay? Or split it with somebody else. That's another way you can get around it. Order a salad or a soup when you go out. That's an, uh, we find that people that eat soup or salad when they're um, dining out or home, if it's a broth-based soup that is, are more full, they tend to eat less calories than if they hadn't had the super salad. So even though they're ordering more food, they're actually, because the fiber in that is helping fill them up, and the fluid in the soup actually helps fill you up too. Um, so plant-based diets really can fill you up with fewer calories. So um, if anybody's got baked potatoes, oh my god, yeah, like, it, that's going to fill you up a lot more. A lot of people will shun the potato. And actually, it is better if you're out to, you know, if you can get some nice fresh vegetables or a salad versus the uh, french fries or something like that. But a baked potato isn't a bad choice. That could fill you up pretty good. Um, it's got a lot of satiety to it. Um, and you can see, a lot less calories even with that. Um, last night, the chef at the restaurant, talking about so it was really, it was a nice meal. He used, he made red skin potatoes and he filled them with the mixture of the scooped out potatoes, and they were twice baked potatoes, that is, and he used Greek yogurt. So anybody tried this? Another, we were talking about foods that make you feel, feel full. Greek yogurt's like, um, well you see it's got its own eye on the grocery store. It's that popular right now. <laughs> but it's also great because they strain out the whey pro a lot of the whey from it, and so the protein is higher, the calories are lower, and there's less sugar in it. So it's a great substitute for mayonnaise or sour cream, and it's going to make you feel full. I use it like to marinate um, a salmon dish that I make at home quite a bit too. And it works great. And it, it holds up well while you're cooking because it's so thick. Um, so our higher calorie dense foods, they're higher in fat and lower in water. So yeah, that, yeah, you can, every time we go buy junk and donuts, somebody's screaming, let's stop there and get some lunch kids up. You know, I have the same problems at home too. Those foods are going to be less, have a lot less water in them. You are going to feel full after it. Um, but definitely a lot more calories and your yeah the other ones have a lot more water and fiber so they do fill you up pretty well um, but and sometimes I think too when we have those high sugar high fat foods like a donut you have that spike and then boom we drop off afterwards so how do we transition to the new American plate so this thought of trying to have two-thirds of our plate be fruits and vegetables and whole grains and only one-third being meat so it's a I think it has to be a gradual pro process you know take a look at your plate at home or or, you know, how you how do you normally, like, you know, what kind of meals do you eat? Is it heavier on the meat? So, and this is, you know, like, this, this would be like if we went out to eat, you know, what they would be serving us. So maybe more like potatoes or french fries, <coughs> or probably even more often than mashed potatoes, and maybe a peas. So not a lot of phytochemicals, maybe a little bit in the peas, but not too much else going on there. So maybe moving, maybe a couple little changes can really make it healthier. So. Maybe adding two vegetables on the plate, two different vegetables, like doing a veg vegetable medley. And it's not, at the home, it's not that hard. We can have some frozen vegetables, and or I mean, they have a million different salad mixes in the grocery store, too. So that's easy. It doesn't take long to make a salad, either. So that's an easy way to get two vegetables in right there. And doing a smaller um, serving of meat, you may have to cut it in half. Like if you're buying chicken breast, most of the time those are six ounces. 
So, or buying the smaller, if you do want to choose to have a hamburger, buying one of the smaller ones that are pre-made or make smaller ones yourself, and trying healthy servings of whole grains. So, doing brown rice on the side or baked potato for um, extra fiber or whole wheat pasta. Um, so, you know, and also trying to work on a healthy weight. That's, that's so many of us are struggling with it, as I said. Um, there's a lot of theories out there that say the too many carbs are going to make us gain weight. Too much fat is going to make us gain weight. And we really do know that it had, it's not just so much, um, the weight gain is likely when we're, if we're taking in more calories than we're actually getting a chance to burn. So kind of looking at, it, it's very, and I think probably in your work it's a lot the same too. So calories in versus, uh, calories in equals calories out. So uh, and a lot of times, myself included, we're in an office setting, we may have a chance to munch a little bit and we don't realize the calories we're taking in, are we really getting a chance to burn them off? So that's kind of a, I think, a way to think about it too. Trying to get, in, if you're walking program, it's gonna give you guys a chance to be motivated to do a little bit more with moving around and so forth, so. Um, now, going on to uh, the My Pyramid, um, and actually, it, actually, this is where this uh, this presentation is just a tiny bit dated from NCIS, because now we're on to the My Plate, and I wanna tell you a little bit about that. Um, so restaurants, we know that they even restaurants, particularly the grocery stores too, they all sell supersized foods, the fruits and vegetables, for instance. They've gotten so much bigger. Even like if I buy a salad, it now like it's all in like a pound container, which is hard for the family to you know to consume before it goes bad. Um, so if you go on the mypyramid.gov, we now have the my plate, which actually makes it's very consistent with this message where two thirds of the plate is fruits and vegetables and whole grains and about one third is the protein group. Um, but in, in, on the myplate.gov website, they will show you um, the samples, uh, the serving sizes and so forth. Um, for instance, if you went, now that they are mentioning pasta here, if you go to a restaurant at one of the great Italian restaurants, if you've seen the plate, you know, the pasta is kind of scary. They spring it out in a huge bowl. And it's five or six servings. So that's like, that comes out to, five or six cups, I'm sorry. That's going to come out to really 12 servings of grain for the day. And most of the time, we're saying for most people, they need between six and 11 servings of grain. Most people, and women probably less, men, you know, taller men probably a little bit more. So it's, it's a lot. So we have to kind of watch ourselves when we go out. Um, so portion size equivalents, this is kind of, it, this is you know, just applicable to all of us. So a deck of cards, not that most people play a deck of play cards anymore, maybe on the computer you can find a little deck of cards. So that's about the size of meat, of a meat serving, so it should be about three ounces. So for the ladies, it'd be like the size of your fist, okay? It's not very, very big. Um, for your vegetables, it's about the size of a baseball. Um, and then for your rice or your, um, your pasta or whatever it be, like about the half of a baseball. Or um, I've even seen it, it actually, we have a little, um, in one of our health education offices, like the size of a computer mouse. <laughs> it's not very much, we can easily eat more than that. And uh, you will find if you are doing the whole grains, like the whole grain <coughs> pasta, the whole grain rice, half a cup if you measure it out, you will feel pretty full from that. Um, so you have to kind of look, it, it might be interesting even to take a plate out and see, you know, if you're doing family style where you're serving, you know, putting stuff on, everybody's putting stuff under their plate, how many plates are, you know, like how much would you normally fill your plate up and then take a measuring cup out and measure it and see what does this really equate out to because, like I said, we don't always know exactly how much we're getting. Um, so I think portion sizes is probably the biggest thing that we can do to help us with with weight. Moving definitely is so important, but looking at portion sizes, not necessarily saying that you can't have any certain foods, but just cutting back on the portion sizes sometimes can make a huge difference for people. Um, go out, like go do a search and try to find smaller plates. <laughs> and check it out, yeah, like I, mean, I would try to find like little four ounce bowls to use with my kids when they were babies and it was almost impossible, like little bit of bowls. Um, trying to do 60 to 90 minutes of physical activity a day for weight loss. I think just trying to find things that you enjoy doing, you know, whether it's bike riding or walking or, or swimming or something that's like fun that you can see <coughs> that you can enjoy. And it doesn't have to be all at once. It doesn't mean that you have to, you know, get special clothes, go to the health club, just find things that you enjoy doing. Maybe tonight it's gonna be shoveling snow. <laughs> be safe out there though, because I used to work in intensive care and we had a lot of, always had a lot of a lot of new people showing up after a snowstorm with that shoveling, so you gotta be careful. But maybe like if you're going to the mall, or say if you're going to downtown Elmhurst or something, 
They park the car a little further away, walk around and do your errands. Um, people that have dogs, for instance, probably a lot of you guys have dogs at home. They, people that have dogs, actually, they say that you get more exercise than people that have gym memberships because you've got to get out there a couple times a day with, uh, with the dog doing your yard work, doing your housework. Um, and then try to make substitutions to make things a little bit more healthy. So butter, which definitely is this place, ladies, if you're doing baking, like at Christmas time and stuff, you got to have butter for some of those baked items. But olive oil is a great substitute to use in your cook, cooking for it. And even, you know, they're showing some fresh herbs along with it, too. Um, looking at, you know, can we make our desserts a little lighter? Again, I'll use our example from last night that um, for our dessert, they took um, a martini glass and they had gelato, vanilla gelato in it, a scoop, like a four-ounce scoop of it. Gelato has a lot of air incorporated, so it was very creamy, and then they put fresh berries on the top, and it was really nice. Sometimes at home in the summer, we'll do um, low-fat Cool Whip, and then I put lots of berries in with it, too, and, and the kids think it's a, a, a special Fourth of July dessert, but it's kind of fun, and then they get involved with it, too, which is a good thing. Looking at, are there different ways you can do, you know, maybe rather than fried foods, going for the fresher version of it. Um, so there's lots of different ways to, um, to kind of make substitutions to make things a little more healthy there. And uh, seasonings, um, trying to do herbs, whether it's fresh or, um, you know, sometimes you can, you can grow them at home fresh, which is great, and they hold up great. I have a pot out on my steps that's still going. Well, probably not today, there was some snow on it. But with parsley and stuff, and that will come back year after year. So you can plant some in your garden and it will come back. So those fresh herbs are great um, to use, and they have so many phytochemicals. Oregano is like off the charts for how much um, fresh, how much phytochemicals it has in it. So that can also, help with health protection. And they also think it bit of these phytochemicals, like the phytochemicals in tea, they think that can help with fighting against colds too in the winter too. So looking at some of those things. Um, and just try to find, yeah, like try to spend more time, like if you're going to the grocery store, they say shopping the perimeter, like staying with the fruits and the fat, you, it, instead of going into the aisle where so much of the processed stuff is. So staying around the produce aisle, maybe going to the dairy to get some low fat dairy. Um, it, it, uh, it, speaking of the produce, um, you guys you guys are right across the street from Walmart here. Has anybody been over there to shop at all? It's, yes. They've got a lot. It, it, they've done a really nice job with that Walmart with how they've improved the produce <coughs> section over there. So they've got some great deals on like their, um, somebody's just tell me like if you're trying to get more greens on your diet, they have some really inexpensive deals there. But if you're, if you're in a time crunch, using some of those ready to cut, ready to use, cut up fruits and vegetables is actually going to save you money because you're not going to have like a whole bag of something sitting in the refrigerator going bad. So like for my kids' lunch, for instance, I get the cut up apples and I'll throw some in each day and they stay pretty good for most of the week. Or um, for in their frozen section, they have cut up um, onions and peppers and so forth. So those are great for when you're cooking as well. And it'll, you know, you have less waste and it's going to save you a lot of time too. So. Um, just kind of going back to kind of summarize here. So when you're dining out, indulge in the whole rainbow of colors of the salad bar. So just trying to, I think, thinking about your plate, trying to be as colorful as possible. Go easy on the meat, ask for whole grains when it's possible. So um, not always easy in the restaurants, but if you can um, at home too. Or, you know, asking for like a sandwich on whole wheat bread, for instance, or say maybe if you're at breakfast and you're doing French toast, could they put it on whole wheat bread instead of white? Don't be afraid to make special requests in restaurants. Okay, I, I'll tell you a little story about Elmhurst High School Dietitian. So we used to be in Upper Toll Campus, up, up in closer to downtown. One day we decided to go out to lunch. Well, I like to tell you the sandwich shop closed shortly thereafter because we drove them absolutely nutty. <laughs> they went over. So the dietitians, we are not afraid to make special requests. We went in and we're like, I want my, you know, this one wanted the sauce on the side. Hold the cheese. We had no, like, straight orders for the sandwiches. Before, I'm sure that they, like, and right afterwards they, they, they left. So. They did not want us coming back again, but it is true that restaurants want our business, and it's okay to ask. And most most of the time, they will work with you. Um, when I was mentioning going out to breakfast. You can ask when you go out to breakfast instead of like the hash browns or whatever's on the side. Can I have a side of fruit? Usually, they're not going to charge you anything different for that. Can I have a little side salad or vegetables instead of the French fries that come with it? It's usually not a problem. Even for kids' menus, sometimes they will do things like that. Um, splitting entrees is a great idea, or getting a side salad, like I mentioned. Sharing, and it's okay, I I'm like the biggest, I love, love dessert, I love chocolate. 
it's okay to have a little dessert. Just share it with somebody else. Get a couple forks, or if there's a group of people, let everybody you know try a little bit. Um, so just kind of keep the basic rule in mind: two thirds of the plate to be fruits and vegetables and whole grains, and the other third um, um, gets into more of your meat or your protein groups. So this is this is the two. There's um, AICR.org has a great website with lots of good information. There's some menus on there. There's a lot of recipes on there, too, if you're interested. Um, but there's also a couple of the websites I'd like to mention that I, I personally frequent a lot. Um, I am a big fan of the allrecipes.com. I don't know if anybody's been on there. A lot of good. You can sign it for like a daily one to come out. They have a way that you can save your, uh, like a recipe box. You can save your stuff online. I do some kids' cooking classes for the park district and like I've made stuff and I'll just it creates my shopping list right from there which is pretty cool when I'm doing a, a special program for them. Um, that's good. And I'll mention the Elmer's Hospital website so I've been working for them today. We have a so it's emhc.org. You can check out where our community classes, we have some exercises class exercise classes out in the community. We also have lunch and learns. They have lunch and learn going on today in the library and um, actually if you go Bring your lunch. They're going to give you a. You're going to get paid to go to it. You get a five dollars Starbucks card. Granted, it's only to buy like maybe one cup of fancy coffee, but still, you get paid to go and hear somebody talk about a health topic. And so those are also on there too. So and we have a lot of other neat things going on. We do things for prostate cancer. Um, we do prostate cancer screenings. Um, we do the screenings and smoothies and so forth. So check us out. There's a lot of fun things, and we are literally right around the corner from you guys now. So. Come over and see what we have to offer. There's a lot of fun things going on there. So I hope we didn't keep you guys too long. Any questions? No? What do you suggest for breakfast? You know, if the, all the cereals have so sugar coated and if you want to get outside of oatmeal. Right. I was going to say, if you read my mind, I was going to say oatmeal is a great choice. Um, you want a cereal, if you are going to do a cold cereal, you want something that's got a little bit more protein in it because a lot of times, they, like you said, they are loaded with, with um, some of them can be just really loaded with sugar. So look on the side, you know, for some that are loaded with that have higher protein content. Some of the lower sugar cereals that are high in fiber, like um, Cheerios, are actually still probably one of the best cereals out there, in my opinion. Shredded wheat, also very good, as long as you're not getting this fresh of mini wheats that my kids would want to be having if they were here now. Um, those kind of things. I also like, like I said, something with protein. So maybe it's a, a slice of a whole wheat toast with um, some peanut butter on it. Or another nut butter, if you like that. Um, the Greek yogurt with some with a little bit of fruit in it. Um, or, and for that matter, you can even make a smoothie if you're like me and I'm running out the door in the morning and I'm like, oh, I forgot to eat breakfast and I got to teach a water aerobics class in a half hour. I make a smoothie a lot of times in the morning. I throw some of the Greek yogurt and milk and a bunch of frozen berries and I can drink it on my way into work and I'm doing pretty good. So that'd be a right I recommend. But yeah, it is true. The cereals are tough. But, and there are some now that are like some of the. Um, I know there's one my dad eats that's like a special K one that's a little higher. The Kellogg's one that's a little higher in protein. So some of the ones that are higher in protein I would recommend because it's got more staying power. But oh, you can't beat oatmeal. That's got a good staying power. I like the higher fiber versions of the oatmeal. Um, I know that Jewel, the Jewel uh, generic brand has one that's pretty good. So check that out. Let's see. I know I had a question over here. Yeah. Yes. Just listening to different nutritionist mm -hmm. talks, mm -hmm. beers and beers is aimed mostly towards cancer. Yeah, this one. And then you get others cancer. that are aimed more towards heart health. Right, you know, right. Trans mm -hmm. fat saturated. Mm -hmm. fat. Yes, yes. How much do they coincide the uh, the plans you've got? This is very it's very consistent with that. So the trans fats, um, which basically are like your hydrogenated fats that they throw in a lot of our processed foods, margarines, which they most of the time now they're pulling it out. They have trans fats we think really do um, have some link to cancer. So we're almost better off having saturated fat if we're going to have fat um, from that standpoint. Or olive oil is still good. So we're finding that a lot of this, almost all the recommendations for preventing cancer are very consistent with helping prevent heart disease and diabetes. So they're, it's pretty much, if you've been through car you know, cardiac issues, the message you got there is definitely going to help you with preventing cancer. Even discussing the... Uh how you portion control. So I yes. find myself now, one of the nutritionists recommended mm -hmm. make a portion before you even dive into it at the restaurant. Right. You separate what you intend to eat and what you intend to that's take a, That's from. another great suggestion. Yeah, I, like drawing, I, actually I, I've been known at a restaurant, I'll say, bring me out the container, the takeout container with the meal. Mm -hmm. I've known people to even say, 
divide it up for me in the back. <laughs> Don't even take it out. But it's better to do it before you actually dive into the food. So I think it's okay. nicer that way if you're taking and giving to somebody else at home that you know right. they haven't touched it or anything. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. And it's just nicer for the next day. We get something for the next day, which is kind of fun. Um, yeah, but they're very, very consistent. I know Nancy said somebody had a question about touch on soda pop. Uh, so yeah, it's just like yeah, yeah. and it's unfortunate. I used to drink a lot of like diet diet sodas. Even and, diet sodas. Yeah, because I know there's a lot of sodium. The regular soda has a lot of sugars. And mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of so when I was younger, I imagine, you know, 18, 20, I was drinking 10, 12 sodas a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know who drinks six or seven cokes in a day and those are in the garbage in there. Well, it kind of depends on what your body weight is and so forth if you were going to do it, but we do like to see people, I mean, we're consuming so much. I mean, it would be nice if people could keep their total carbohydrate intake to about 50% and then sugar should be maybe about 10% of that. So it's not, so depending on the person's, you know, you look at the overall, you know, it'd be nice if we could see people keep it. I've seen numbers like about 10 grams of sugar, and we know that most cereals have like one serving of it has like at least 10 grams of sugar. So, as you were saying, you switched down to one can of soda. Yeah. Time. Is yours regular? Or? It was regular. It still is regular. When they found, unfortunately, I was a big diet pop drinker when I was in college. Oh my yeah, gosh, I like yeah, it's a hard thing to give up. And um, what I found, I weaned myself up to um, drink seltzer water now most of the time because I want to have the water. Yeah, so I, I had an issue in December. I'm one of the. I don't think my partner in crime is here. <laughs> we, we did January and December. I was a December baby, um, but it was. Um, but my friends. One of the wives made a comment the other day. We were all out watching the Super Bowl, and uh, my buddy Chip's wife said, "You know, Randy, I'm worried about all the pop you're drinking." Because mm -hmm. I, I, well, it used to be more beer, but you know. Right. <laughs> right. So it's at least you're at least you're moving more towards yeah. It's, it's, but, yeah. But, you know, Diet pop is still feel, a better choice. With the caffeine and everything. The I, caffeine and. I order yeah. decaf coffee, then I'm ordering. Diet Coke. <laughs> so does Diet Coke have more caffeine than like an iced tea work? Mm, it's actually pretty equivalent. Yeah, it's around 45 oh. milligrams of caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> it's similar diet. between tea and... No, no, there that's go. a, good, a good question. Um, however, they, they think that the thing with diet soda is that we're drinking it and our brain, brain is saying, oh, you know, it's like, oh, I want, I want something sweet and refreshing right now. And it's like, well, the... You still, this you didn't really get the sweet that you needed because it's artificial sweetener, mm -hmm. and so you're gonna. They find that people have, have more sugar that cravings. Miller Lite save all those calories. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it would work that way, right? It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's sinful way. It, worked. it is. It is. <laughs> but um, the seltzer water doesn't have any artificial sweeteners in it. It's got the carbonation, oh. so that might be. Yeah, I get like the lemon lime, and it's pretty good. So you might want to try, try some of that. that if you want, like the like. Oh. Little, you can get the jewel brand, but the LaCroix is pretty good. It's pretty mm -hmm. refreshing, so okay. I would recommend that. Yes? As far as the portion sizes go, you know, somebody your size might be able to eat that little bit, but look at Tony. Oh, he's we, the Whopper guy. None of us. Well, he's <laughs> six months ago, really. I had a cup of coffee. <laughs> wow, wow. I had a bottle of water for lunch because they wouldn't let me stop. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, how could he eat that portion and be... Yes. Yeah. yeah it is a little... It took the about a half hour later. I'm freaking hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Sixteen ounces of protein for men, even for taller men, you know, is what we recommend. Because we find that most people are getting too much protein, and even at, you know, Wait, we're starting to see a lot protein? more people with kidney problems in the United States. <laughs> you know, the dialysis, they cannot build the dialysis centers quick enough for these poor people with the protein <coughs> So we're, we're getting a lot more protein in our diet than we need, and the kidney is the area that gets processed, and that's where we get into trouble. So it is, we don't really need that. So, but, okay, you need to get filled up. Do some protein from, you know, like so the Greek yogurt is very filling. That's got good protein in it. Um, dairy, low fat dairy is also good. You get some of that in too. You need to at least a gentleman this size would probably need at least three cups. A, a taller gentleman, three at least three cups of dairy, three servings of dairy a day. And but yeah, put some vegetables.
vegetables can be done. Kind of cheap, Eat dairy? Fiber, big yeah. fiber, that will fill you up. Just maybe not if you're in a meeting. Yeah, <laughs> <stuff. laughs> watch that. Is cottage cheese real? Cottage cheese is pretty. Is it? Yeah, is actually, it, is it like good? Half a cup is <laughs> <and> <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no, you know, you know, know, cottage it's cheese. It's horrible. Waste of money. It's a very, <laughs> yeah. Hi, it's it, the it's low salt natural. cottage like, cheese doesn't taste like very spoiled. good. It is salty, but it is very it's yeah, high protein. Yeah, you can have a lot of it, like two ounces of cottage cheese is equivalent to like one ounce of like a one ounce of beef, basically in terms of the calories and the protein. Okay, so are you saying twice as much that that could be used as a protein replacement? Because I noticed the plate had no dairy anywhere. Right, it should. Right, and I'm sorry, I apologize for that. There should be dairy on the plate. Yeah, if you looked at um. She said that was an antiquated slide. Yeah, it is, that one was an antiquated slide. It was. Yeah, I have to go back then and, and revise it. So yeah, if you look at the the my plate, and I think if you want to go on that website, it's called choosemyplate.gov. Um, we have the, the glass of milk on the side. Okay. So yeah, it's still important. And we do Obama's still want to see right people to doing. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Yeah. Michelle Obama. Right next to it. <laughs> Tom is yeah. very quiet, but when he says something, he just resigns. That's a good idea, too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You could definitely use that. If you know, A lot of people are lactose intolerant, so almond milk or soy milk are also oh, fine, too. Almond milk is terrible. Um, you want to just check to make sure it's fortified with calcium, vitamin D. Where do you okay. use find so it? Get some protein from it. Yes, can ask about that, about right? They see a lot of rice milk, a lot of, now that they're uh -huh. saying to avoid soy because of all the things it could affect with estrogen for women. Yeah, for something. women, there's some concern about it um, with uh, with breast cancer that they could they potentially the increase the risk of it. Um, you know, and I think it's, the studies have been, I, I'm not, they're not like 100% foolproof. If you really like soy, you know, and it basically, we were doing a lot of soy about 10 years ago because we thought we looked at Japanese people, they have lower risk of prostate cancer, breast cancer, less heart disease. We're like, well, maybe we should get on the soy bandwagon. So the soy manufacturers went crazy. Of course, they it's lots of processed soy. The one thing we know about soy that really is true, proven, clinically proven fact is that 25 grams of soy protein a day will lower your, your um, cholesterol if you have high LDL cholesterol. So that aspect of it is good. But it's a little mixed on the breast cancer. I, if I were a woman that had breast cancer and I never eaten soy before, I wouldn't start doing it. If I was somebody that really liked it and I didn't have, I hadn't had it or didn't have any risk factors for it, then it's probably worth it. We think the people who could potentially benefit from soy in terms of reducing cancer risk are children. So getting the kids interested, not that I've had any luck with it, I'm gonna try, <laughs> with uh, doing more soy in their diet before puberty, that's when, so we think, because the, the Asian population eats soy, like from you know childhood on, it's their whole life they're doing tofu and those kind of things. We were, most people are starting it later, so we think that's where, when we look at the breast cancer studies, it's the women are doing it in the per, uh, perimenopausal, menopausal years, when their estrogen is normally supposed to be dropping and it has an estrogen-like effect. So. Does it, are they still using it in a filler, like in school lunch programs and that, and the burgers and that? Yeah, they do, they do. And they, I mean, they, and they, you I can get that stuff in school too. <laughs> you probably did, yeah, they do. But and they, you can also buy it like veggie burgers and stuff in the store. The Morning Star Farms. There's a couple different brands that have it. And then yeah, some of them are, are not bad. They are very high in sodium, though. I'll tell you. So it's like this double-edged sword. Like, mm -hmm. okay, the soy might be good for helping you lower your cholesterol, but oop, a lot of sodium, and the baby. A lot of times, those people have high blood pressure too. So it's like there's just a lot of information out there. <laughs> Probably more more than we than you want to hear about. But um, I think I'm going yeah, if dollars. you guys are interested, I have done. We have other presents. This is like one of the million different ones. I have a great one called Eating on the Fly that, that talks all about like eating healthier restaurants. And, we can, and I kind of mentioned some of the things from there too. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. But I can let Nancy know if you're interested. We're going to try to do a couple of these a year. So. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a good. I think it's a good investment in your time. Yes. Kelly, I have a question for you. You mm -hmm. showed a picture of a baseball for the vegetables. Mm -hmm. Does that like you're saying two? Let's try two on a plate. Two is that both servings would be equal yeah, to a baseball? Yeah, okay. no, actually, so a half a cup or a light bulb size would be even better. Better, like we have actually have like a light bulb size of a broccoli in one of our our health education sets. So. That would be like a half a cup. Well, so that's one serving. Limit vegetables. <laughs> it doesn't seem you could never. You know what? You can never have enough vegetables, as far as I'm right. concerned. So Amen, sister. Yeah, I think they're just trying to. Sh the reason we kind of show the vegetable serving size is because we want people to see, like, oh, that's not that much. I guess I could do more. Yeah, that's really the. Yeah, I, I, in my 
in many years as a dietitian, I've not met anybody yet that ate too many vegetables, including myself, I'll be honest, <laughs> even though I'm trying to get more in. So more vegetables, the better. You know, definitely, especially the leafy green ones, I don't think we can get enough of those. They have super, they're super foods. They have so much phytochemicals in them. And I think, too, they're also looking at this for, you know, we had so many people with the flu, with the common cold this winter. Um, it, like I say, work over at the health club, half of the staff was out this week with some kind of illnesses. So I think we just have to, the fruits and vegetables can help with that. The more of that we can have, the better. So yes. do you still work up at the courts? Or? I do. Yeah, I'm um, over there. What, yeah, you look familiar. I come in there. I haven't been there for a couple yeah, of years. Yeah, I think I've been there once yeah. or twice. Buddha yeah, Buddha overworked me one day. Oh, <laughs> who was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen you train. That's right. So That's why I train with this. Yeah, yeah, I do some training a little bit there. All kidding aside, in case anybody ever said anything, I didn't tell them I wasn't feeling good. Because so. oh, no, I had my heart attack right after I left. Anything that's said in this setting is not going to be repeated okay, back but to anywhere no, else. But, but you know, there's times <laughs> yeah. people make assumptions. And, yeah, you know, yeah. I, no, I'm sure you didn't. You've got a great, there's a great program up at the they board. There's some great trainers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a, yeah, I do a little little bit of training, but I do a lot of nutrition education. I work with the kids. Uh, we do um, like the, with kids the, plus. the kids plus. I do um, cooking classes with them. Our, their, our director is really wanting to get more nutrition in. We have our spring break. We have spring break camp coming up. I'm going to do, like, we'll have help the kids. The kids will make their own lunches. So it'll be kind of, I'll be bringing my, my smoothie maker in. And it's fun. They have a really good time. That's through the so hospital? Or you and that's through, actually, through Elmhurst Park District. That's my other. Okay, <laughs> I have a couple different gigs going on here. Okay, yeah. I was curious because I thought the hospital yeah, had moved out. This is, yeah, the hospital has moved out of Park Because they moved it out of that upstairs room. And right, right. And we're going to move kids. Their kids plus is going to move up there. So that's another, not too far from so here. Marcus How do you get great. kids to eat the healthy stuff? It's tricky. Sometimes we have to hide it. <laughs> well, my son's a king of ranch. And I'm so sick of watching him dip everything in ranch, but it's the only way I can get him to eat a vegetable. Yeah. Well, and the way you got to look at that with the vegetables, at least, is all these phytochemicals we're talking about, they're fat soluble nutrients. So my son is the king of the ranch, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he will eat. So as long as we're just trying to nut, but keep the ranch coming, even if it's low fat. It, 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 going to help him absorb more of the nutrients. Those lycopenes we talked about, good for prostate health, they found they much better absorbed, much better utilized if people are getting some fat along with it. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, that I would say I, I do the same thing too. I, I, my kids will eat hummus. They like hummus dip, so we send that. Um, I just got recently at Costco. I'm like, I'm telling you, I'm like on 83 all day long. I, I don't, I can't believe I haven't been here before. Um, it, over at Costco, I got a Vitamix machine. So, because I do a lot of these cooking classes, and I, I made uh, the other night for dinner. We had going green smoothies. My husband, of course, being kind of a smart ass, said, you know, this looks like the lawnmower clippings you're serving dinner. <laughs> but it was good. So we had like I think four cups of spinach in there, and I put like grapes <coughs> and apples and oranges and stuff, and it was wonderful. So, you know, and the kids liked it because it was green, so it was different. So it's, I have really good luck with the smoothies, getting some stuff in. I hide a lot of stuff. I make pancakes with sweet potatoes and, um, you know, so I'm not I'm not above hiding stuff in food. <laughs> this, and there's some books, like cookbooks, like The Sneaky Chef, and there's some different ones that you can get at the local library that talk about that too. But I think we just have... And I also think that sitting down with them and eating, which we're not always good about, but the more they see us eating some of that kind of stuff, the better, the more that we model for our kids. So, you know, I'm eating the salad. So I find out from the, the one of the gals at school that my son's asking for a salad now in the lunchroom. He won't eat one at home, but he's eating it at school. <laughs> so I can sign him up for hot lunch next month so he can get this out. But he'll eat it every time that they have it there. He's begging them for it. So. But he sees us eating it. So I think it's just the modeling. So, and the same thing with the, for those of you that have kids with the exercise too. We can do fun things with them. Like, you know, it's a pain, but taking them sled, sled riding, running up those hills, it's not, that's a lot of work. Or, you know, taking them to the family swim, doing things like that with them, going for a bike ride. The more we can model those healthy activities with them, the better, you know, that they're going to do with that. So just get out and get moving. So now, awesome. the one thing you haven't mentioned is fish. Oh, how could I not mention fish? Yeah, I love fish. <laughs> Let's talk about thank you. And it's Eleanor, right? Because you answered the phone when I called and said, I think I'm with you. <laughs> yes, Eleanor, fish. Okay, so the best fish, in my opinion, is salmon because it's high in omega 3 fatty acids. Do not save the money on the farm raised fish because it's not worth the money. It's not going to get as much omega 3 fatty acids. The wild caught salmon is the best thing. 
Um, and so if you don't want to spend the big bucks, my kids, uh, once again, I, 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 the more I get them involved in the preparation to this, another way that I get them. So we have this recipe called Mama's Cracker Salmon. It's my great grandmother's recipe. is canned red salmon. And it's very high to make a three fatty acids. And I use even some of the juice from the can in with the milk. So we do a layer of salmon, a layer of, uh, we make a, the cream sauce out of skim milk, and then they crush the crackers for it. So because they did something with it, then they feel like they've got to eat it. <laughs> or at least they say they do. But they do, they will eat that. And they ask, we have that a couple, we have that at least once a week. So we do that. But salmon, I think, is one of the best. But if fish is, it really is the miracle food. It's, it's got the great for protein, omega-3 fatty acids, but you want to go for the, you know, I think salmon is probably one of the best choices you can have. So, so yeah. the farm raised doesn't have? It doesn't have much. It's very low on the list. Yeah. yeah. I could pull up on my computer somewhere. I have like a list of, um, I do a pregnancy class um, with the moms, and we talk about like they can't have sushi, which is a bummer because of, you know, the um, food, food contamination, uh, food, foodborne illness, and so forth. But yeah, the, the, um, the farm raised is really low on the list. So somewhere on my, another PowerPoint on my computer, I have that saved. But um, look, at, and there's some other ones too, but salmon are really, I think it's really, really the best ones. But you gotta get the wild caught. It's gonna be more expensive. Um, but if you get to Trader Joe's or all these, I think which is owned by Trader Joe's, they a lot of times have it in their freezer case year round. So it's not, Costco does too. Costco is the certain it's times of year you can get it. Oh, in the frozen, right, at Costco, you're right. Sometimes in the fresh. In the fresh, like in the summertime, so yeah. you can find the fresh. So it's gonna be more, but it's, it's very worth it. And I like grilling, it's awesome. Yes. Let's talk about Tony again for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many calories does a guy that size need a day? Probably and, how many calories does he need? Yeah. And what do you do at 1.30 or 2 o'clock when you're starving again? <laughs> to call Tony. Tony, 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 You're 6 foot 5. He probably needs around 3,000 calories. I'm just going to guess without pulling my calculator out and, and, and getting really personal asking how much he weighs. So we weigh that. Huh? 248. See, I love the men. They have no, like, you and I be like, yeah. I remember, you know, they just, it, it's all there. What if you're lying? <laughs> I don't care. No, no, no. That's, well, if you're tall, you need to weigh when you're that tall, six foot five. Is there a chart that shows you what we should weigh at that at? No. Actually, BMI is the best thing you can do. Body mass index, you can Google that and just go in and, and put your height and your weight in and it'll tell you we want to be between 18.5 and 25 for that. I thought the BMI was like 230 or 235. Insurers for life insurance, none of us really feel <laughs> really? the life insurance table. Two weeks ago. Yeah, and the, the thing with the BMI, if you are doing a lot of strength training, a couple years. You know, you can you get more, more. You're going to weigh more. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, that is a, it can be a little deceiving, but it is, it's really going to be the gold like standard the the um, when we look at I research and we're looking at, um, you like know, all the research looks at that. We can eat weight men and women, we can compare their weight. So why do the BMI numbers were developed in the 40s and 50s too, aren't they? People were small. about, not to put you like but like the metropolitan life tables. And they were, and they were, they were not very On my sister's diet. Yeah. So that, yeah, the BMI is like maybe come out and last. Just because you didn't get a haircut, you lost like seven pounds. <laughs> <laughs> What was the snack? Oh, one o'clock in the afternoon. What do you do for a snack when you're starving? And what time? We're talking about one thirty to. We're talking about Tony. All right, all right, all right. Which big man? I'm using that hungry. Poor Tony. The first thing I have to try to do is is pay somebody to give me some of their food at work, but it doesn't work. So long. No, it doesn't work good. Okay, so you need to go over to Walmart, <laughs> hop across the highway, walk over there, but don't get run over by a car. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know what? The, I, once, I think that I'm really crazy about the Greek yogurt. It's good. It fills you up, so that'll keep. And also, They're let's take a look at what did yogurt. you eat for lunch? <laughs> How much did you, did you eat lunch? I had oatmeal breakfast. in the morning, okay. a banana, right. an orange, an apple, a protein <laughs> bar, okay. and two sandwiches. What was on your sandwich? For breakfast. For lunch. For lunch. The oatmeal for lunch, too? The oh, the oatmeal for breakfast. breakfast. Okay. All right. What was on your sandwich? Lunch. 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 <laughs> I guess it's not supposed to be eating. But <laughs> it's whole green, it's whole wheat gray, you know. You it's had whole green bread. Okay, it's the right bread. Good. Okay. Put mayonnaise right. on it? No, nothing on it. Just lunch meat and cheese. Just lunch meat and cheese. Okay. Quite right. a bit. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So next time you're going to see the leftover and tomorrow you're going to get some of the lettuce and tomato on there. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is that you're going to have to 
I would say pull out some carrots and hummus. That would be another good I thing. have carrots every other day too. Okay. Or celery with peanut butter. But celery no, with it, peanut it doesn't butter. work Street anymore. Cheese. Ooh, cheese. I have that too. Okay. Are you drinking enough water? I'm drinking Probably. a ton of water. How much are, are you, you getting enough sleep? I think so. Like how much is a ton? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of cups, a solo with no okay, ping pong. Okay, but how many ounces? Soup. soup. Yes, soup or salad. A broth broth soup. Is soup. Well, but broth every day is different. Sometimes I get a can of soup with salad, but uh -huh. right, right. Well, you can yeah. never eat. A, you can never eat too many vegetables. Right? Every so too many vegetables. But there, you can only eat so many carrots. I mean. But there's a whole big set of vegetables. You just figured out what zucchini is, so try that. Wasn't it good? It was good. I ate it. There you go. Try zucchini. Yeah. Try a red pepper. So Snickers isn't going to work, is what you're telling me. And you know, you're not going to feel that satisfied from the. I don't care what the commercial says. You're not going to feel that satisfied. It worked for Joe Pesci. How about a little bit of peanuts? How about a little bit of nuts? But it has to be like fill your shot glass up with it. You guys are a lot of fun. I'd love to come back and talk to you again. And and Can you make something? Almonds and walnuts. <laughs> walnuts are yeah, super high. I thought you that thing with the screw top. You can eat whatever. My heart, my heart yeah. guy over here. All, uh, walnuts have a, have a ton of omega-3 fatty acids in them, too. We're talking so raw, though, right? I mean, Pardon me? Raw. 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 Not the salted. Oh, uh, Julie would be so proud. Throw some on your salad. Throw some on your salad. I get nuts and grapes on it and all that. How about, oh, we talked about fish. Tuna fish is another good one that's high in omega-3 is, or at least if you're thinking it is, we do worry about that with mercury. You don't want to go crazy on it, but that's, you would get those little cans of tuna fish are very filling too. Right, very but low that's, calories. that's just two sandwiches. There's got to be something else still. <laughs> <laughs> Water. I'm not sure I drink a lot. I drink like no, no, no. eight, eight of those cups that. a day. And how much do you weigh? 241. Okay, so you should be drinking 120, 120 ounces of water a day. Eight oh. times however many that is. That, well, eight times that is not 120 ounces. You how should probably be drinking about 120 yeah. ounces yeah. of water a day. Did you hear my other question? How much right. sleep are we getting? Eight. Okay, I'm guilty. Not enough. Okay. Yeah. We eat, we yeah. get less than six or seven ounces hours a night. We need closer to seven to nine hours a night. It's very, very hard to manage to keep your weight down. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't open the job sites till eight o'clock. <laughs> I think you need to go to bed earlier. If you get home by seven or eight o'clock from work and when you started at six, you got time. I, I, you, you don't want to see him sleeping later. on the job site. We don't want him to be sleeping on the job site. No, we don't. Well, that's a very safe job site. We'll set him up with a bed there. <laughs> Go out to your truck and take a little nap or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're allowed to have lunch That might be a little bit. No, we do need we need to have that nice continuous sleep, and not and most of us are not getting that, and we it's a huge we think that's probably another big, huge piece of the puzzle. What about children? How much sleep should they? Be? Depending on their age. So okay, I'll use my children for instance. They're four and six years old. They're in their age group. They're supposed to be getting twelve hours a day. That's it's hard to wow, it's hours. hard to do. It's hard to do because you get home. You're probably gonna have homework tonight, you know. And then you get, the, and it's like, boom, you gotta get to bed. And you, they gotta be up by seven to get out the door to be in school at eight o'clock. About twelve during after school huh? sports. About a twelve-year-old. Twelve-year-old, I'm gonna say closer to nine or ten hours. Even the high schoolers are supposed to be getting more like eight or uh, like closer to nine hours. Your daughter is neither. There's no way she she's getting that. She has to be on the bus at six thirty in the morning. How is she supposed to get nine? Hours? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was, so we're well, just it's, too busy. That's it's like bed right after 8 o'clock. Oh, yeah, I think we first heard start you start asleep day. with the kids in Japan, and they felt like, and they were just, like, the ones that were getting, like, in my kids, they took the six- or seven-year-old, that were getting, like, maybe seven or eight hours, they were having a much harder time. Their weights were just creeping up. The ones that were getting more sleep, we're actually, we're staying, we're doing a better job. I think it's about nine. Well, sure, if you're asleep, we're not eating. Well, it's, it's more than just that. It's not just that you're not eating, but it's the horn, like, the, a lot of the hormones that regulate our appetite and stuff. A lot of that, there's a lot going on while we're sleeping. <laughs> and we need to do more of it. Myself included, so. That's my sheet. All right, one more, one more, one more simple question. How many calories do we burn in an average day just 
not exercising, you know. You're sedentary. Oh, and if you're not, if you're totally sedentary, if, once again, it depends on the size of the person. Should I use poor Tony here as an example? Yes, he sits a lot. Tony sits all day. He doesn't do anything. I can multiply off of Tony. In fact, don't just carry me in this chair back to my office. He does use his fingers. You just got one drop. You got to drop your You are very active with your fingers. Yeah. Well, I mean, he needs it. He's probably going to burn about 2,500 calories because he's a taller guy. Just sitting there. Okay. I'm about five, I'm I'll I'll five to four somebody. and a half, okay, on a good day when my hair is getting a little taller and stuff. I need about 50, without doing anything at all, I need, my. I probably burn about 1,100 calories. Okay. So, that and that's like, you know, said into you know getting up moving around a little bit so we do burn some so the more you move the more you can eat that's the other Sweet. thing too. Yes. I got a question like when, when Tom goes to the gym it's like the elliptical machine he's, he's on the elliptical machine for like an hour and it just says like 150 calories is that accurate no. Okay. You know, listen, none of the machines in the, the gym, I hate as much as I love, Should love, love. Should you be looking love. at Mets instead of calories burned? Yeah. Day? Who's in the ring? Yeah, the, the, the yeah. calories burned in there is not always accurate, especially you've got to put your weight in and so forth, okay? Not everybody's being truthful about that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Are <laughs> those heart rate monitors pretty accurate? They're fairly accurate, yes. The, those are accurate, but the, ca but the calories burned is not so accurate. The machine that burns the most calories in the gym is really the treadmill, believe it or not. Treadmill. Even it, you would think it'd be the elliptical or the elliptical with the, I mean, there's like a, you know, a bunch of different kinds of ellipticals with arms and so forth, but the treadmill still burns the most calories. Okay. Walking? The people that are walking the dogs are burning more calories than that. those of us that are dog. Of course, plus. Exactly. Get a dog. Put your kid on a leash. Muscle you have, the more calories you're going to burn. So, I should be in there. You do it. Go. Get one of those jiggly beds. Get one of those beds with the quarter things. Jiggly beds. 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 Very good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you your job. Well, we do find that adults. This is a good question. For a child, no. I would say for a child, no. They cannot sleep too much. I think the kids really are sleep deprived. Somebody like for an Tony? adult, yeah, if you're sleeping more than nine hours a night, that can be a problem. Between seven and nine hours a night can be. A, but there's a lot of us that are sleeping more on the weekends to make up, and they, they're finding they used to think that was that still was okay to do that. Okay. But you're not taking calories in your sleeping, so there is an advantage. There is an advantage. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 There's a lot. There's a lot of important stuff that happens while we're sleeping that we don't. There's a lot of repairing going on in the body. Hormones are being regulated that help us regulate our satiety and our you know. There's a lot happening, a lot of important Sometimes stuff. You should stuff like the well. and, so, and you don't have to be actively involved with it. <laughs> That's the best part. So, yes. Thanks so much for having me. And drive safe, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank